So 2011 and 2012 have been uh, drought, we've had drought conditions here uh, and the uh, results have been uh, very interesting. In 2011, the, uh, the, we began the spring with relatively dry conditions and uh, those dry conditions persisted through most of the growing season in 2011. As a result, the biomass production was relatively low from uh, all of the cropping systems. But what we observed was some difference between the switchgrass and the high biomass sorghum. We saw that both of, the, uh, uh, both of those crops, uh, their growth uh, slowed down at approximately the same level of soil moisture in the switchgrass and the forage sorghum, but the, forage sor the switchgrass was able to stay greener longer as compared to the, the sorghum, which started to, uh, to wilt and, and brown uh, much sooner. And what that's probably related to is the fact that the switchgrass had a head start with its rooting system. So even though the drought prevented the switchgrass from really growing and thriving, it still uh, was able to stay green and to make it through the drought conditions, probably because it had a more developed root system. This year, 2012, is a different story because the drought conditions developed a little later. We started the spring uh, with relatively good soil moisture values and then the drought uh, conditions really came on strong later in, in July. And so what we see there is that in, under those conditions, the, the high biomass sorghum did much better than in 2011 because in, this, in the start of the year, it had enough time to start to develop a root system and essentially get ahead of the drought conditions. So it's, it's complex and timing of the str water stress is gonna play an important role. Thank you.